All right, Math 43, we're gonna dive into chapters five and six. They're kinda, they're going to come at you both at the same time. And to give you an overview of where we're going to go, we're picking up all of our continuous random variables that we're going to talk about in this class. Um, we're specifically gonna do the uniform distribution and the normal distribution. There'll be two normals. There'll be the standard normal and then the just general normal curve. So we're gonna do both chapters in one packet. And if I could reference you to that tr trait table, I just wanna be clear as to where, where we've been and where we're going. So we've done discrete tables, whether I give them to you or you have to create the tables. We saw the special case, that common discrete distribution of the binomials. All right, so these were the chapter four problems. So you can see right next to it, here's the uniform distribution. So this is the chapter five distribution that we're going to do. It's by no means the only continuous random variable uh, distribution out there. There's exponential, there's hypergeometric, there's all sorts, but we're just gonna focus on the uniform. And then in chapter six, we pick up the standard normal distribution. Um, this has to do with z-scores. You might vaguely remember z-scores from back in chapter two. I gave you a formula for it. It was value minus mean over standard deviation. And I mentioned it would come back up in chapter six. And we're in chapter six, so we're gonna have a whole bell curve with z-scores on the x-axis. All right, so we're gonna have a rectangle. We're gonna have the bell curve with the z-scores. And then we're gonna have just your regular old bell curve, just your regular normal distribution. And it'll be back to our favorite, the variable would be on the x-axis. All right, so we're gonna have variable on the x-axis for your regular dis normal distribution. All right, you're gonna have z-scores on the x-axis for your standard normal distribution. And you're gonna have your variable on your x-axis here. All right, so we're branching into the next three columns of this trait table. That's what we're gonna unpack in, these, in this packet. So by the end of this packet, we should be able to recognize and understand probability density functions in general, so PDFs in general, for when we're dealing with continuous data. All right, we should recognize the uniform probability distribution and apply it appropriately. All right, we should also recognize the standard normal distribution and apply it appropriately. And then recognize the normal probability distribution and apply it appropriately. So when you see these three, all right, again, this is the uniform distribution. That's gonna be our rectangle. The standard normal is gonna be our bell curve with z-scores along the x-axis. And then just your normal probability is your bell curve with your variable along the x-axis. So we're gonna shift away from discrete random variables and towards continuous random variables. In the last chapter, we focused on tables and the special case of the binomial distribution. So now we will turn our focus to the uniform distribution, the rectangle, the standard normal distribution, bell curve with z-scores on it, and the normal distribution. There are many other continuous distributions out there in the real world, but these are the three that we will study in this course. So for this chapter, when you hear me say, create a PDF, all right, so we're at PDF now. I don't want a table anymore, I want a graph. So when I say PDF over here, I want you to either graph me a rectangle or I want you to graph me a bell curve. Those are gonna be your options floating through chapters five and six. Draw me a rectangle or draw me a bell curve. All right, so PDFs in general, right? If we really wanna zoom out and talk about chapters four through seven, a PDF either means make me a table or draw me a graph, all right? For the table back in chapter four, right? We had our variables up on our sample space, up on the top row, probabilities down on the bottom row. All right, so when we go for the graphs, we're gonna have our variables along the x-axis, and then our probabilities, our relative frequencies, along the y-axis, just like we had in chapter one. And again, when I ask you to create a PDF for me in these chapters, draw me a graph, you got two choices, rectangle or bell curve, one or the other. When you figure out if you're with the rectangle or bell curve, if it's rectangle, stay in this column. If it's bell curve, stay in this column, or potentially that, that next column on the next page, this bell curve column, okay? And I'll, I'll show you how to distinguish between the two. So just to reiterate, the continuous probability functions that we will be looking at in this class, you're gonna have two of them. All right, you're either gonna draw me a rectangle 
and we call that the uniform distribution, or you're going to draw me a bell curve, all right, which we refer to as the normal distribution. Now, what's not written on any of these graphs, let me just scooch this down a bit so we can see it, all right, if we have the uniform distribution, or, or any PDF, all right, so probability is always going to be along the y-axis here, or you could say relative frequencies will be along here. All right. And then your variable will always be along the x-axis. And this, this cutoff, this low to high, that will be your sample space. Okay. So we'll have our sample space in numbers from low to high here. We'll label it with our variable. With these rectangles, we'll be able to figure out how tall this is. All right. We can use our area formulas from back in our um, earlier math days. We'll use a lot of base times height. Okay, but your variable will be along the x-axis, probabilities will be along the y-axis. All right, and the same is going to go for the normal distribution. All right, so it will still be your variable along the x-axis, and then over here would be probabilities or relative frequencies. Along the y-axis. And what's going to happen with the normal curve, whether it's the z-scores are down here or just a regular variable, is in terms of these heights here, in terms of our probabilities, we don't have the math under our belts to be able to do this. And I don't mean that in any kind of negative way. It just it requires some like advanced calculus to figure out these heights, and it's just not worth it to us. I'm going to show you how you can do most of this, not most, all of this stuff on your calculator. So for the uniform distributions, we do have enough math under our belts. We can do base times height things here, and I'll explain that in a little bit, but we don't have enough math under our belt for the normal, so we're gonna be using our calculators a lot here. All right, so let's flip the page, and then we'll see where we're going from here. Okay, so a probability distribution for a continuous random variable x is specified by a mathematical function called a probability density function, or a PDF. All right, so we've made PDFs before. When we were in discrete land, we made the tables. They had a couple of rules governing them. If you remember those tables, um, the bottom row had to total out to one. All of those prob probabilities had to sum to one. And then each number in that bottom row had to be a number between zero and one. Those were the rules that governed the discrete PDFs. So let's flip that now and look at the two rules that govern the continuous PDFs. And these, again, these are graphs. We are making graphs for continuous random variables. So when it comes to making PDFs, all right, in chapter four, again, for the PDF, we made a table. But in chapters five and six, you're either gonna owe me a rectangle or a bell curve. That's what PDF means uh, on the continuous side of things. All right, so the rules that govern the graphs, your graph, your rectangle, or your bell curve cannot dip below the x-axis. So it can't go below the x-axis. If you remember from your math days, anything that comes below, if I'm gonna make a little x-y axis here, anything below the x-axis has a negative y value, right? And what that would mean for this is we would have negative probabilities, which is just not something we have. So we have to have our probabilities, our y values be positive, specifically between zero and one. So when you draw me a rectangle or when you draw me a bell curve, it'll never dip below the x-axis. All right. The total un area under that density curve has to equal one. And this is analogous to all of the numbers on that bottom row have to total out to one. And when I say the numbers on that bottom row, when we think back to chapter four with those tables, the numbers on those bottom row, or the numbers on the, that bottom row had to total out to one because the probability of your sample space has to be one. And this is the continuous PDF version of that, is that if I looked at the area under that curve, it would have to equal one. What I mean by that, if I go back to my rectangle, this rectangle has an area of one. This bell curve, has an area of one. Now, we have enough math that we can talk about areas of rectangles. We do not have enough math to talk about this area. So where I said on the previous page, we would use base times height a lot for uniform distributions because we can talk about base times height as the area of a rectangle. We don't have the, the calculus under our belts to do it here, so we'll be using our calculators. Okay, 
So the probability that x falls in any particular interval is the area under the density curve and above the interval. All right, and we're gonna play this idea out. So you're gonna hear me talk constantly that probabilities this time are area under a curve. All right, and if you've taken calculus and you know something about antiderivatives, all right, antiderivatives get you the area under the curve, and that's again why we need calculus to really be able to talk about the normal distribution. Um, so we're gonna use our calculators in lieu of it. So as I said on the previous page, the two most common continuous density curves, all right, continuous PDFs are the uniform distribution and the normal distribution. So in terms of the uniform distribution, right, it's going to be a rectangle. And sometimes we refer to this as the rectangle distribution. So let's just get some basic numbers and some ideas under our belt. You can see here that the low looks like an x value of two and the high looks like an x value of 10. So I just want to mention here that the spread is 2 to 10. I don't have units. I don't have context. I just have a quick little graph. So I want you to see that the spread is from 2 to 10. So my, my, X, my pencil excuse me, can go anywhere on the x-axis between 2 and 10. So that is my sample space. Okay. We could then figure out this height. And I'll, I'll talk more about how we would figure out that height on the next page. All right, but I just, I wanna reiterate a couple of things. The area of this overall rectangle, not the shaded one, but this giant rectangle, all right, or not giant, but the larger rectangle has to be one. That was the second property of being a PDF. So total area of rectangle would be equal to one, okay? And when I ask you for something like this, the probability that x goes between three and six, you can see I shaded the rectangle between an x value of three and an x value of six, right? I started inside the parentheses and said, I wanna include this area, right, from three to six, and I wanna get the area under a curve, right? So I want a smaller subset of that overall rectangle. And whatever proportion this is, right now when I look at it, it looks like it's about 30%, somewhere in there, right? The gray circle, relatively speaking, to the overall rectangle. I think I said gray circle, excuse me, the gray rectangle, kind of looks like a square, actually. This gray portion in relative area to that overall rectangle looks like it's about 30% of that overall rectangle. And that's just a guess. I, I don't know. I'd have to crunch the numbers. All right, so when it comes to finding probabilities, all right, we're gonna find the area of these shaded rectangles through the formula base times height. So find area of shaded rectangle using the formula base times height. All right, and that will be how we find probabilities. All right, so let me write here, calculate probabilities. by finding the area under that shaded rectangle, which is base times height. Okay. And we're gonna practice this. I mean, I know it's a lot to take in, but that's how we're gonna be finding um, probabilities. So no more tree diagrams, Venn diagrams, binomial PDF or CDF. We're gonna be using base times height if we're on the uniform distribution. On the regular old normal distribution, so not the, the standard normal, we'll get there when we have z-scores, but for right now I have x's on the bottom. Again, if I was to find the area of this entire bell curve, all right, the total area of the bell curve has to equal one. And this bell curve can't dip below the x-axis, the same way the rectangle couldn't dip below the x-axis. So those are always our two properties. The total area under your curve has to equal one, and that curve can never dip below the x-axis. So I wanna find this, this probability. I don't want all of the area between negative three and three, or however long it goes. I want it just between one and two. So again, you can see inside my parentheses, I went along the x-axis from one to two, and I shaded the area under that curve. And proportionally speaking, I don't know, to me it looks like about 
I don't know, 10, 20 percent, right? If this is 100 percent, maybe this is 15, 20 percent of that. That seems like a reasonable guess. And we will not be able to use a formula to calculate this probability. So to calculate probabilities here, all right, we don't have the math for it. And again, I don't mean that in any kind of negative sense, it's just we haven't done calculus, so we can't do it. So we will use our TI-8384 calculators to make this one happen, okay? So in the next example, we're gonna spend time on the uniform distribution, all right? I definitely wanna spend time here for a little bit and then we'll lead up to the standard normal and the regular normal curve. All right, I'll catch you on the next page. Okay, let's get into one of these. So for the uniform distribution, we have a uniform distribution, sometimes also known as a rectangular distribution, is a distribution that has a constant probability. All right, so again, I wanna reiterate, when you're hearing this word distribution, in chapter four, it meant make me a table, but in chapters five and six, it means make me a graph. Okay, so for continuous random variables, because we're, it's impossible for us to make a list of the possible values of the variable because they're continuous, they spread out over an interval, they're not isolated points, we have to make a graph for our distribution. And when we talk about the uniform one, we, we mean that we make a rectangle and that comes from the fact that the height, quite literally, the height on this entire rectangle is uniform. It is the same the whole way across. Okay, so as I read this example, be on the listen for what is the variable in this problem. So define a random variable x, excuse me, define a random variable by x, the amount of time in minutes taken by a clerk to process a certain application form. Suppose x is uniformly distributed between four and six minutes. All right, so we can hear that there's a clerk, she's processing some kind of application form, he or she, all right, and the amount of time, right, and they give us the units in minutes taken by a clerk is our variable. So it looks like it takes this clerk somewhere between four and six minutes. All right, now I wanna connect this setup to this rectangle. For example one, I gave you the rectangle. But for future examples, you should be able to go from this brief setup to your own graph. But let's talk about how we get there. All right, oh, and let me answer this question first. Is X continuous or discrete? Well, it's definitely numerical, time is numerical. And we talked about in chapter one, time is continuous. So we have a continuous numerical variable somewhere between four and six minutes. And the reason I can't make a PDF table, I, I, I literally, I cannot list out all the possible values of this variable because it could take this clerk exactly four minutes, 4.1 minutes, 4.17 minutes, 4.175 minutes, 4.2, there's so many values. In fact, there's an infinite number of values that I couldn't make a table with my sample space in the top row. That's why we have to make a graph because I need to represent everything between four and six minutes. Okay, so how do we get from this setup to this graph? All right, so our variable is amount of time. So you see me labeling the x-axis with that, right? And there are my units. I've also labeled the x-axis with the letter x. All right, so this x-axis, is analogous to the top row in your table. Now I picked four and six because my spread was four to six minutes. All right, so that's how I'm getting the x-axis. Variable on the x-axis in words. I'm gonna scale it with my low to high and I'm also gonna label it here with x. All right, so let's talk about how I get the y-axis. That's the one that's a little bit more um, intricate. So your y-axis will always be probability. So you see me labeling that P of x here. Now, how did I get the one half? All right, so let's go back to your algebra or your geometry days. We know that area is base times height, okay? If we refer back to that first property of a continuous PDF, it says here that the total area of your curve has to be one, which means that the total area of this rectangle has to be one. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set base times height equal to one. So let's do this over here. Base times height has to equal one, and this will always be the case. All right, so my base is here, 
my height is here. And I want to show you how I got to this height of one half. So this base, all right, how do I find the length of this base? It's always going to be your range, high minus low. So in this case, it's always six minus four. Well, not in this case. In this case, it is six minus four. So my base here, right, and I'll, I'll write this out. My base is six minus four. So that base times height has to equal one, but our base is just two. So two times the height has to equal one. If you remember from your math days, to solve for h, you divide by two. So that will ultimately leave us with my height being one half. Okay. So whatever this base is here, all right. In case, in this case of six minus four is two, then the reciprocal will be your height. All right. So, because the reciprocal of two is one half. And then if you think about it, right, now base is two, height is one half, two times one half is one, okay? So whatever your base is here, it was two, height is one half. Let's say, even though it wasn't, let's say this was three to six. Now I'm just gonna cross this out for a moment and I'll, I'll undo it. If this was three to six, right, what would our base have been at that point? Six minus three, right? Our range would have been three. So our height here, it wouldn't have been one half, it would have been one third. Right? It's always the reciprocal. Okay. If this had been the number two, and again, it's not, but let's just say for example, it was. All right, in that case, my base would have been six minus two, which was four. So this height would have been one fourth. Okay, so whatever your base is, and you find your base just by calculating the range, high minus low, all right, six minus four, then do its reciprocal for the height. And that's how you get a, uh, you can find the height of any continuous uniform distribution. All right, so we got the graph, right? Again, six minus four is two, reciprocal, one half, that's the height here. That is the uniform height. All right, calculate the probability that X is between 4.5 and 5.5. So let's just take a step back and think about what this means. For this clerk processing this application, what is the likelihood it will take this clerk somewhere between four and a half minutes and five and a half minutes to process your app if it really takes this clerk somewhere between four and six? So what's the likelihood it's between four and a half and six and oh, four and a half and five and a half? All right, just like discrete, start inside your parentheses. Let's figure out which x values we want to include. Now our x values are no longer along the top row of a table, they're on the x-axis. So I want to start at 4.5 and I want to go to 5.5. So if I'm kind of eyeballing this, right, 4.5 would be somewhere around here maybe, and 5.5 might be somewhere around here. So on my x-axis, I want to find 4.5 and I want to find 5.5. All right, so let's go mark those off and see if we can pick them apart. And then I'm just going to find that new rectangle that I've created. So here we go. All right, so if I try and do this, this is almost two inches wide. So I think it would be like around here and like around here. Well, that was pretty close in my guessing. All right, so let's go 4.5 and 5.5. So we're going to go 4.5 to 5.5, draw those little vertical bars, because again, we're going to talk about probability as area under a curve. So find your cutoffs, okay, I'm not going from 5 to 6 this time out, I'm going from 4.5 to 5.5, which is fine, okay, and then I'm going to shade the area under that curve, under that rectangle, that uniform distribution. Even that out a little. It's not too bad. Okay, so I would like to find the area of this shaded portion of the rectangle. All right, 
Anytime you want to find the area for a uniform distribution, you're going to use the formula base times height. So if I want the probability that x is really between four and a half and five and a half minutes, I'm always going to go base times height. So let's start to think about this. Now I don't want the, the base of the overall rectangle, I just want the base of my shaded rectangle. So if I think about the base, it's still going to be high minus low. All right, it's always high minus low. So let me think about this. The base here is going to be 5.5 minus 4.5. And that base is going to be 1. Okay. So let me just put this, I'll put it right here, kind of, I know this is getting cramped. All right, but the base in this case is 5.5 minus 4.5, which is equal to 1. It's always going to be this high minus low, but again, instead of doing the overall rectangle, I just want this shaded region. So my base is 1, and my height is still 1 half. It is uniform. All right, so my probability is about 50%. All right, again, let's, let's zoom out. If it takes the clerk somewhere between 4 and 6 minutes to process an application, it's going to take... 50% of the time, it's going to take between four and a half and five and a half minutes, right? You get a 50% chance of it lasting this long if you go in and ask that clerk to process your app. All right, so let's try a different one. Let's take a look at the next part of this where it says, now let's calculate the probability that x is greater than 5.5. So again, start inside your parentheses every single time. I'm going to go to 5.5 on my x-axis, which is right around here. I, I lined it up so those would be the same numbers. They won't always be. 5.5, but I want to go greater than. So if I want to go greater than, that means shade to the right. So for this problem, I'm going to shade to the right of 5.5. I'm going to try and make this a little darker so we can distinguish it. see the different that it's a little darker. Just, I tried to put more pencil on it. Okay, so now when x is greater than 5.5, that would really mean 5.5 and then go to the right forever. And I ran out of rectangle, which is fine. It just doesn't take this clerk longer than six minutes. So when you run out of rectangle, no worries. It's still going to be the same idea. So anytime I want probability, I'm going to go base times height. Well, let's do the base for this example. So the base for this example, it's still always high minus low, but this time it's 6 minus 5.5, which is equal to 0 0.5. Right? This base just isn't as long. So my base here is 0 0.5. Right? My height, it's still uniform. It's 1 half. So when I multiply those two numbers together, then you could multiply them as two decimals. You could have done 0.5 times 0 0.5. Either way, you're getting 0.25. And just so we're kind of remembering some points here, if this was 0.25, I know that doesn't show up that well, and this is 0 0.50, if this is 25% of your rectangle and this is 50%, and you know this entire rectangle has to total out to 1, you also know 25% is over here, right? The complement rule. That applied to discrete variables when we had the table. It also applies to area under a curve, right? If this is 25% of your curve and this is 50%, this has got to be the remaining 25%. All right, I'm going to erase that because we still got one more problem to do, and I don't want these numbers interfering. Okay, so let's look at the next one. All right, I just want to keep my rectangle in view. There we go. So this one says, hey, calculate the probability that x is between 5 and 7. So again, I'm going to start inside the parentheses. Let's go to the x-axis. If I need to go to 5, that's going to be right here in the middle. So let me start marking that off. I just have to find my ruler. I'm not sure what I did with it. Oh, I found it. All right, so here's my ruler. Let's go in the middle of this. All right, so somewhere around here. All 
All right, now I don't know that I can do the shading um, any better. I'm just gonna talk about it because this says go from five to seven and I don't have enough artistic um, capabilities to make a different gray scale with my pencil. But if I wanna go five to seven, I would go five all the way up to seven. Now keep in mind, again, I ran out of rectangle, not a problem. You will run out of rectangle frequently. All right, so really, even though this says five to seven, it's gonna get cut off at six. So if I was gonna try and shade this area, it would be this, this rectangle from five to six. So if I wanna go base times height, okay, we're gonna take our base. It's always high minus low. Let me do my base here. All right, so my base is high minus low, six minus five, which is one. So my base is one times my height of one half. So that again, gives me a probability of about 50%, okay? So there's our first look at uniform distributions. Next up is a multiple choice question.